Hey there fellow gardeners and soil enthusiasts, welcome back to the Humus Heritage Channel. I'm thrilled you're joining me today for what might be one of the most eye-opening discussions we've had yet. Are you unknowingly sabotaging your garden's potential? Many gardeners add carbon to their soil, but not all carbon is created equal. We're putting cardboard and biochar head-to-head -to, -head to reveal which one is actually helping your plants thrive, and which might be hindering them. Everyone talks about adding carbon to their garden, but there's a massive misconception that could be stunting your plants. Forget what you think you know about cheap soil amendments. We're about to expose the surprising truth about cardboard versus biochar and the winner might completely change how you garden forever. The Great Carbon Debate Why This Matters for Your Garden Before we dive into our carbon showdown, let's establish why this conversation is absolutely crucial for every gardener watching. Carbon isn't just another soil component, it's the backbone of healthy soil ecosystems and the foundation of thriving plant communities. When we talk about soil health, we're really talking about carbon cycling, organic matter retention, and the complex dance between decomposition and long-term soil building. Cardboard has become the darling of the permaculture and no-till gardening communities. Walk through any gardening forum and you'll see countless photos of cardboard sheets covering future garden beds, praised for its accessibility and perceived environmental benefits. It's the poster child for upcycling waste into garden gold, and many gardeners swear by its ability to suppress weeds while slowly decomposing to feed the soil. Enter biochar, the mysterious black powder that looks like charcoal but promises to revolutionize your soil for decades, even centuries. This ancient soil amendment, rediscovered from Amazonian terra preta soils, operates on an entirely different level than traditional organic matter. While cardboard represents the quick-fix mentality of modern gardening, biochar embodies the long-term thinking that separates truly sustainable gardeners from weekend hobbyists. The fundamental difference between these two carbon sources lies not just in their composition, but in their relationship with time, soil biology, and plant nutrition. Understanding this difference will transform how you think about soil building and help you make decisions that will benefit your garden for generations. Let's start with cardboard's undeniable advantages, because there are several that have made it so popular among gardeners. Cardboard is incredibly accessible. Virtually every household receives packages wrapped in this material, making it a zero-cost soil amendment that diverts waste from landfills. Its large, flat sheets make it exceptionally effective for weed suppression, creating an impermeable barrier that can transform even the most weed-infested areas into clean, growing spaces. When used in sheet mulching or lasagna gardening techniques, Cardboard provides an excellent foundation layer that gradually breaks down while allowing you to build a rich, layered growing medium above it. Many gardeners appreciate how cardboard creates defined growing spaces and helps establish new beds without the backbreaking work of removing existing vegetation. However, the complications with cardboard run deeper than most gardeners realize. The first issue is consistency and contamination. Not all cardboard is created equal and many commercial cardboards contain synthetic adhesives, inks, and coatings that don't belong in organic growing systems. While brown, unbleached cardboard is generally safe, the reality is that most gardeners use whatever cardboard is available, potentially introducing unwanted chemicals into their soil ecosystem. The decomposition timeline of cardboard presents another significant challenge. While proponents claim it breaks down in months, the reality in many climates is far different. Thick, corrugated cardboard can persist for over a year, especially in dry or cold conditions. During this extended period it can create anaerobic conditions beneath its surface, potentially harming beneficial soil organisms and creating conditions favorable to harmful bacteria. You know, perhaps most critically, cardboard's decomposition process creates a significant nitrogen demand. As soil microorganisms work to break down the carbon-rich material, they consume available nitrogen from the surrounding soil. This nitrogen immobilization can create deficiency symptoms in plants, yellowing leaves, stunted growth, and reduced flowering, precisely when gardeners expect their soil amendments to be providing benefits. 
The physical structure of cardboard also presents challenges that become apparent over time. While it initially suppresses weeds effectively, large sheets can impede water infiltration and gas exchange. Even when properly moistened, cardboard can create channels where water runs off rather than penetrating evenly into the soil below. This can lead to uneven moisture distribution and create dry pockets that affect plant establishment and growth. Biochar represents a fundamentally different approach to carbon soil amendment, one that's rooted in ancient wisdom and validated by modern soil science. Created through pyrolysis, the controlled burning of organic biomass in low oxygen environments, biochar transforms temporary organic matter into stable, long-lasting carbon structures that can persist in soil for hundreds or thousands of years. The magic of biochar lies in its incredibly complex porous structure. When organic materials undergo pyrolysis, they lose their decomposable components while retaining a carbon skeleton riddled with microscopic cavities. These pores create enormous surface area within a small volume. A single gram of quality biochar can have a surface area equivalent to a tennis court. This structure functions like a microscopic apartment complex for beneficial soil organisms, providing countless niches for bacteria, fungi, and other microorganisms to establish thriving communities. Unlike cardboard, which depletes soil nitrogen during decomposition, biochar actually enhances nutrient retention through its exceptional cation exchange capacity. The charged surfaces within biochar's pore structure can bind and hold nutrients, preventing them from leaching away during rainfall or irrigation. This means that fertilizers, compost nutrients, and naturally occurring soil minerals become more available to plants over extended periods. The water retention capabilities of biochar are particularly impressive in sandy soils where it functions like countless tiny sponges, holding moisture during dry periods and releasing it gradually to plant roots. In clay soils, biochar's porous structure improves drainage and aeration creating better conditions for root development and microbial activity. When we compare cardboard and biochar in actual garden conditions, the differences become immediately apparent. In side-by-side -side trials using identical plant varieties, soil types, and growing conditions, biochar consistently demonstrates superior performance across multiple metrics. When we examine the economics of cardboard versus biochar, the initial cost difference becomes less significant when viewed through a long-term lens. Cardboard's zero acquisition cost is attractive, but its benefits are temporary and require repeated applications. The labor involved in sourcing, preparing, and applying cardboard multiple times over several seasons adds up to a substantial hidden cost. For gardeners seeking immediate cost-effective weed suppression and bed establishment, cardboard remains a valuable tool when used thoughtfully. The key is understanding its limitations and planning for its temporary nature. Always remove tape and synthetic labels, ensure adequate moisture for decomposition, and supplement with nitrogen sources to counteract immobilization effects. Consider shredding cardboard rather than using large sheets to improve air and water penetration. However, for gardeners committed to building truly sustainable long-term soil health, biochar emerges as the clear superior choice. Its permanent benefits to soil structure, nutrient retention, water management, and microbial activity create lasting improvements that compound over time. When properly charged with nutrients before application and incorporated into existing soil management practices, biochar transforms gardens into self-sustaining ecosystems that become more productive and resilient with each passing season. That's a wrap on our deep dive into the cardboard versus biochar showdown. I hope this comparison has given you the insights you need to make informed decisions about your soil building strategy. Remember, Great gardens aren't built overnight. They're the result of thoughtful, science-based decisions that prioritize long-term soil health over short-term convenience. If you found this information valuable, please hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss our latest soil science discoveries. Share this video with fellow gardeners who are ready to take their soil health to the next level. Your garden and our planet will thank you for choosing the path of regenerative soil building. 
Until next time, keep building that beautiful soil, and I'll see you in the garden.